Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. This time on Voice of the Sea, we're at the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center at UH Hilo. We meet up with hatchery manager Brian Koval. This is Brian Koval, who's our hatchery technician. Actually, he's serving as our acting hatchery manager right now. This is what we've just been, this is our, we had a problem with our oysters once they reached a certain size, once they were dying, so we didn't have enough water inside to satisfy them, so we kind of dev- devised the system. Maria helped me uh, figure it out, but this is what we've devised, and we need to clean this off a little bit, but it works works pretty good at raising oysters, so that's what, that's what really matters. So what do you tell people that you work on? I mean, oyster spat sounds kind of funny. How do you explain that? Um, <laughs> it just, we just, uh, you know, we, we, we just, we spawn the oysters, we raise them up until they're ready to be put out for, in mother nature. And, you know, so we're, we're just taking, we're just taking care of them in a nursery. Uh-huh. You know, we're just raising them up to a certain size, giving them the, the food and the, everything that they need and so they're stronger and ready to go out in the ocean. So, you know, we, we, we need too many oysters to uh, satisfy what we, we're trying, what the, the market is. So we need to put back into the ocean. How did you get interested in working with the oysters? Um, I just got a, I got a job over in Kona working um, out of college. And then through, through um, I heard about a job through the university, and so I got involved over here. But... Uh, I always was really liked uh, sustainability and aquaculture makes sense because the nature, you know, we can't keep taking out of the oceans. We're, we're coming up with less and less each year, so we need to be putting back in. Otherwise, there's not going to be anything left for future generations. Okay, so we're, how do you get started here? Okay, well, we spawn the oysters, and then once the, once the eggs hatch, we put them in these blue tanks behind you. And we raise them in there for about 30 days where they swim around and they're eating algae. And then they go through this metamorphosis that Marie was talking about, where they want to grab onto another oyster, an adult oyster, or a rock, or something that they can stick onto for the rest of their life and stop moving. They, okay. they swim for the first 30 days, and then they, they never move again through their whole life. So when they go through this stage, when they go through this change, we put them in a tank where we put these crushed oyster bits, these little shells of these adult oysters, and then they swim down to the bottom and they stick to those. And they start growing and feeding like that. And then once they get bigger, we actually can pull them out of the sand that they're in. And then we can put them in these, these tanks until they're ready to go to that tank you saw out there. Oh, great. So here's some of the oysters you can see swimming around. These ones we put in here yesterday. They're right there. They look like those little grains of sand. The swimming around on the surface, the black, the black things right here. Wow. Those are those are millions of little baby oysters. Wow. And these are about a month old. These ones are about a month old. Yeah, they were in those blue tanks for about a month, and then they we put them in here when they're ready. And so they swim around for a little bit until they figure out that they want to go to the bottom, which is in usually a couple days before all of them find a home. Sometimes they stick to the tank. Sometimes they, you know, they they do that. But most of them will go onto the onto the oyster shell. The white stuff on the bottom is all oyster shell. Uh-huh. So they'll each one will stick to a different one of those grains of sand, and eventually you'll have oysters that are all all in there. And so, how do you get them out once they've stuck to? So once, they, once they're in there, um, once once we we pull them out, we can actually take the oysters and we put them through. This here. screen right here. So wait, can you just so start over and the, say all that again? Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> so we'll go do what we uh, do we back. take the we take the oysters and the sand and everything and we pass it through this these screens here and the lar- anything larger than this size right here will stay on top and anything that's smaller will go through. So we can keep all the small oysters with the small oysters and all the big guys they can go outside. Where we saw in those mesh envelopes. Mm-hmm. So as long as you remove the large oysters, the small oysters will continue to grow. And so we can, you know, they'll, they'll keep growing. And then when they're ready, they'll stay on top of this and we can send them out to the fish ponds or whatever. But this is the same size as those bags that you saw. So once they're big enough to stay inside the bag, 
Uh-huh. We put them out there. So. So it looks to me like you have a lot more oysters in here than you have outside in those ponds. Um, actually, we have we have comparable amounts. Usually, this is just the smaller ones, and you'll have higher numbers in here. But as as they grow, you'll you'll get less and less, um, like surviving to be large. So there's always going to be more in here. But once you get them out there, those are like your those are your survivors. Gotcha. So. So, like, on average, about what percentage of them survive this stage? Um, after upsetting, it's like 30% of them survive. Maybe sometimes more to 50% of them will actually be able to make it to be sent to be adult oysters. So, I mean, compared to the nature, in nature, the chances of an oyster surviving are, you know, hundreds of millions to one. You know, this one has a 50% chance. That's a lot. That's a lot higher. It's pretty good. It's a better chance for these oysters. So. And why are the tanks sitting in water? Um, they're sitting in this water. This uh, we have a bubbler. We have airlines that that bubble in there, and they bring in fresh water and fresh oxygen uh -huh. into these tanks. So they're able to, you know, be constantly the uh, getting new new water in there. And that way, the tank the tank running is just like recirculating the tank. So there's a drain hole or something that I can't see on the bottom. There's the, on the bottom of these. It's just like screen like this, oh. but it's small. This is you know, so it's a lot smaller where all the sand and all the oysters can't get through it, but so water it, can still get through it. Oxygen can still get through it, but the oysters can't get through it. It looks solid, but it's not. Yeah. It's, gotcha. Very. So these broodstocks just came in the mail? These just got overnighted to us from Washington. They, we need some oysters for our spawn in uh, two days from now. So they sent us some, these animals to us. So we get the animals to spawn by changing temperatures. Uh -huh. So that's how oysters react to spawning is if they go from being cold to warm, they'll want to spawn. So when they first arrive, we need to crack one of the animals open and get an internal temperature. And is that a sacrificial animal? That then? is a sacrificial animal, but it tells us a lot of things about the other animals. Dependent. So, the animal we open has a lot of eggs. That means probably the other ones also have a lot of eggs. But the one you open doesn't have very much. It probably means that a lot of other ones maybe don't have very many eggs either. And then would you hold them longer before you spawn them? Yeah, we would hold them longer if they weren't if they didn't have very much eggs. If they have a lot of eggs, that means you got to spawn them right away before they do it when we aren't watching. <laughs> Gotcha. So, okay. You grab the oyster. You can How do you choose which one you're gonna pop open? You really can grab uh, any one. You know, this one will we'll take this one. There's a couple ways to open the oyster, but the way I prefer is I stick it in the rear of the oyster. And you get it inside and you twist it. So you got the oyster open a little bit. You can see his tissue in there. So we stick the thermometer in as far as we can go, and it will. So here, on here, this is between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. So this animal, you see the temperature is actually going down. So the internal temperature is about 21, almost 20 degrees. So that's, yeah, about 20 degrees is what the inside of all these oysters are. So we now know, and oh, there's actually a lot of eggs stuck to the thermometer. But we can actually open up the rest of the oyster. So you stuck the temperature, the thermometer in, so you got the temperature before you opened it up and changed the temperature too much? Um, yeah, you just get the temperature of like what they are before you put them in the water. So, oh, wow. wow. So this one is really <laughs> ripe. These are all eggs uh -huh. that are inside of the female. They're actually really plump. This one has a lot of eggs. So these oysters are all very ready to spawn. Inside so right here is where all the eggs are kept. And in here, the animal's got a lot of, a lot of its body mass is eggs. So can you show me the different parts? This is the foot there? This is the, actually, these are the gills right here. Oh, this is where the oyster breathes okay. and it takes in and it filters. Um, it's hard to see with all the, the gonads. Yeah, with all the gonads in there. But um, the gills go around in here. Uh -huh. And the inside here is the heart right around in, in this area. It's just so cloudy. <laughs> but the oyster's attached. All oh, this is gonad as well in there. Wow on the back side as well. But inside here you can kind of see in there's the stomach. This is where it's is the algae and stuff that it's been eating. Uh-huh. And um, 
you know that that's that's in here but right right there is the heart right in right in the center it's 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 kind of hard to see unfortunately but um but these oysters are definitely ready to spawn so is that good news for that you that is good news because we're going to spawn <laughs> we're trying to spawn oysters this week so we know that these are ready to be used so we'll have a spawn for this week and maybe one for next week as well so we try to do a, a spawn every week um, over here but sometimes it's uh, every two weeks so so now what's your next step next step is we have the oysters that are um, we now know how what temperature they are and I took the temperature of the water and the water is 21 degrees so that means we can put these oysters in the water and they won't be going through any temperature change so if they were too cold we would leave them out here where they'd kind of warm up with the, the air temperature uh -huh. they would warm up and then we'd put them in the water but if the water's cold and the oysters are warm the oysters might spawn so we gotta you know put them in the refrigerator if they're too warm or we gotta leave them out in the air if they're too cold so but now that they're the same temperature we can start we have empty tanks prepared for them and we can put them in there and uh, hold them for spawning all right so let me put this down <sighs> So we're actually, actually, I'm going to need help with this because I can't, I have eggs all over my hands <laughs> and as oysters, no, no, not, not this one, this, mm -hmm. they're putting these ones in, but um, if you put eggs in, they re also react in that way, if they sense eggs in the water, they'll, they, start they'll start spawning. And so they're, they're a community animal, so as one starts spawning, they all start spawning. So if I put my hands in those tanks, those other guys would, would, would smell it on my hands. Oh, and there'd wow. be a few eggs in the water and they would all start spawning. And so after they spawn, it takes a long time for them to, to re-get their eggs, you know, to get all those eggs again because it's a lot of energy uh -huh. that they need to, so. So can you, you can just voice over and explain what they're doing here and how the cans are set up? Yeah, so inside the breech can, there's, um, there's a water pipe coming in, an algae pipe, just like the regular, um, the regular tanks we have over there. These ones have a drain on the side. It actually is, as the tank is um, filling up, it gets to this pipe that's on the side. And as it gets to that height, it'll overflow from there as opposed to overflowing from the can. Uh -huh. So that just serves as a drain for us. So it's taking water from the bottom, water's coming in from the top, and it comes out through the pipe through the bottom. But, so, um, and we have different, this is where we keep different, uh, different fruit stock apart and so we put labels on them when they arrive and if they're what condition they're in so and is this still the pacific oyster these are all pacific oysters yeah the ones we have in here and is that about as big as they get yeah that's about as well um, they actually can get a little bit bigger these ones are probably about a um a three to four year old animal some of these larger ones smaller ones are maybe like a two year old but they kind of give they give you um when we get broodstock, a lot of times we get different sizes, like a small ones mm -hmm. and the big ones, because as oysters start out, they all start out as male. And so a small oyster is typically a male. But as they get older, large animals, they go under metamorphosis where they actually turn into female. The University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. Helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific. Through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community, from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. 
Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. NOAA Pacific Services Center, linking people to information and technology. The Pacific Services Center wants you to be prepared for any weather emergency and know your tsunami risk. NOAA Pacific Services Center, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship.